what we did here is we extended this bottom step out. It was only eight inches. And we put four more inches on it. And then we got the flow. So it's a lot easier to step up on. Yeah, but for the whole foot that's on it now. <laughs> before you were stepping on it like this with your don't have thought, just Okay, these notches right here, I cut these notches out. That's where the slide bolt's on. And there's a carriage bolt through there, the rounded head. I don't want to hump there. And you're not going to walk back against the wall. So I cut them out so the board will lay flat. Let's see if she fits. Pretty good, Ed. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna screw this subfloor down and be sure to get short enough screws where you don't go through because it will scratch your floor. Yeah. Like I said in the other video, this is tapered to slide up on this slide, so come back about four or five inches before you screw your screw in. These are 5-8 screws. This is quarter inch. The slide is half inch. Normally they're 3 quarter inch, but this is an extra light trailer, so all the flooring and all the slide outs are half inch. Yeah. So you need to make sure that you're not screwing leaving the tip of your screw out when it comes in it will gouge your floor we will be putting a extra piece of carpet there for this to slide on just in case of dirt or anything yeah. well so so anytime we um are moving that slide even in our chaparral when we put the floor in there we just brought in a couple towels and we'd lay them on the floor uh, on either side of the the ends there and we would bring the slide in we had never had any damage doing it that way always be safe and sorry yes because that floor is expensive mm -hmm. And that's what he's going to do. When you put your screw in, make sure that you go beyond the top. The counter mm -hmm. stick it a little bit so you don't have a bump in your vinyl floor. That's it. Okay, here it is uh, installed. It uh, turned out real nice. Um, a lot of people are worried about the weight, but this is quarter inch subfloor. The both pieces probably don't weigh 10 pounds, but they're durable enough to where you can stand on them here on the edge. I don't know if you uh, understood me a while ago, but there's a couple of bolts, stover bolts, that hold the slide out on. And I always like to cut around those to let the subfloor lay flat.
residential microwave and they didn't have it in very well so I decided to beef up the shelf it's going to set on and I made some tracks in there for the legs to set on so it won't slide in and out. Now it won't slide in and out, and I'll put a frame around it, paint it white, and it'll look nice. standing uh, wall mount fireplace in. And the easiest way to do that is bring it up about five inches off the ground, put you a platform for it to set on. You only need one leg. Set it in here. Screw it in and then I'll set the fireplace, push it back and it'll, and it'll set on this shelf right here and then the screws will go in the side to hold it in. This particular electric fireplace, I think, weighs 29 and a half pounds. Did um, you know we are trying to watch the weight we add? But I thought I would throw that in there. I don't remember the name. I'll. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get that information and post it somewhere on this video. All right, maybe just thought we would show you that. This is, um, you know, the TV cabinet. And that was a cabinet, right? That whole spot right there had doors on it. Like I said earlier in the other videos, we just left those off and we will just have this little cabinet here and I'll put baskets or something. Okay, this there. is a one by 12 that I put up here into this. TV cabinet because our TV is going to set right here. The mount. So we're going to hook the mount up. The mount's going to be about this big because it pulls way out and it goes side to side. I'm going to put this piece up in here in the middle, stabilizer, pocket nut right in the center right in here or some floor. Probably don't need it, but better I, safe than sorry. I say I should have done that. <laughs> All right, we'll get back with you when I put the TV mount up.
okay, I went around and did all of the cutting with the primer um, with an old ugly chip brush because that's all I have right now. So all I'm going to do is pretty basic is just roll the primer on. supposed to be 96 today and tomorrow and the next day so we have a good three days to get some work done hopefully we're about out of this hot weather it's been getting it's what like 111 ed yes <laughs> so 30, 20 in here we're, we're thankful for the 96 degree weather horrible as that sounds but it even with the air conditioner we have to run it on low in the trailer when it is that hot it just we can probably get it down in here and it the, the air never goes off it just stays on in here <laughs> trying to keep up it probably gets to what what is the temperature in here yeah we can get when it's when it's 107 and up we can keep it about 90 to around 90, 95 when we turn fans on. And you can't really paint or anything because the paint just, it dries too fast. And I think that's why I'm getting this, I don't know, Ed calls it this orange peel <laughs> look on there. But it still looks a lot better than, than uh, what this looked like. So I'm going to go ahead and continue rolling this and get that done. Okay, this is what it looks like with two light coats of primer, which <laughs> probably can't really see much since it's white. Oh, focus. Um, it'll be great. There is where the burn... Um, patch job was done it, it's going to be fine but that's the primer and it's two light coats when it dries I'll be applying the um, semi gloss paint and remember you can do this in any colors uh, and I am not good at this at all but if you go on YouTube and uh, watch some of those people paint their countertops with regular paint <laughs> they look really awesome um, I'm just a very amateur at this but that's what it looks like so far alright alright it has the two coat of prime you know of light um, layers of primer and I went around and did the cutting with the semi gloss all I'm using is this Glidden in pure white. I I didn't have it colored or anything. I just used this. You don't have to use um, semi gloss. It's just what I had. I'll be putting two coats of the semi gloss on this, and then we'll go to the next step after it dries. I'm going to show you how I um, do this <laughs> and. I've never done this before other than here in the trailer. I don't really, I, I'm not good at this stuff, but I am trying to give it a little bit of a stone look with some veining and, and dabbing. And so I'll just show you how I do it to try to get the look. And uh, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that show you how to do this much better than I do. But 
here's how I do it. Okay, first what I do, what you do after you get your high gloss on, your primers on, your color, your base coat is on, you can do this. Right now a lot of people will take a different color and go over the top of this. I'm just going to go ahead and use the white I've been using, but you just go over it. You can see where I did that back there. I just don't, you need to do kind of little sections at a time uh, so you can have time to do it while it's wet. And trust me, it dries quick here and here because of the hot outside again of course but you just I just take this small brush and you kind of need to continue at the same angle as you start and you just you make some lines um, no rhyme or reason you're just gonna you know make some Wiggly lines. You can use several colors, would be pretty to do this too. I think this is just a really quick fix for us because later we might actually put in some other countertops. darker color that I put in with this feather and I just kind of put that back over twisting it I can't let this I have a spray bottle of water here that I try to keep it wet because, like I said, it is warm in this trailer. And you just kind of just actually do a big deal. Do. And then I just take a lot of that piece of paper towel. I have a bucket of water over here sometimes. I think it's drying too fast. I will wet the paper towel a little. But, um, and dab it off. This right here, we will be painting. I don't want to put tape on that. I put tape up above it on that filling stick, but I was afraid because that is covered with that, um, what do you call it, uh, wallpaper stuff that I didn't want it to but then I just kind of go in and break those legs up a little. It will start to look like something after you do this a little while. It's getting dry. That's all you're um, kind of doing to begin with. I don't know if this is showing up. I hope so. You just, you know, do it till you think, oh, hey, I like that, or. You don't push hard. And if you want, you can go back and add more. Uh, I also, 
I also go over it with a little bit of my white paint. If I need to break some of those lines up. But that's how I am doing it. Um, I can show you. And this is what it kind of turns out like. Um, that's the look we're going to use for a while. We'll let you know how it holds up. But I'm going to get back to this. That's how I'm working it. I'll probably add a little more dark lines in there. All right. All right. All I'm going to do now is use this polyacrylic from Men Wax. It's water-based and it's getting dark out. I hope you can see this, but I didn't, I'm not using a tray. I just pour me a petal. I've already used a paintbrush and put it on with that around the edges and you just lightly kind of let it float on top. And I will probably put about three or four layers of this. Um, I do. I think it'll be fine. We'll see how it holds up. I will be uh, not setting anything hot. I'll use hot pads and stuff on this. But that's all I'm doing now. I will cover all of this, let it dry overnight, and I will come back tomorrow and try to get a couple coats on here tomorrow. putting the pieces up and you notice how the window sticks out and we didn't want to go right up to the edge because it leaves a spot yes. down here that shows into the wall here so I came over just enough to hide the screws and uh, I put double sticky tape on these just to hold them up at the time. Then I shoot a, a nail right in. This one of course had to cut out for the handle. You just pull your sticky tape off. Line your board up. Stick it down. I'm covering the screws up. So when you look at it, you don't see the screws. Um, so you're using your nail gun, right? Yes. I just shoot it right into the wall. Okay, this gap right here, if you don't want it to show, you just put some white caulking in there, fill it up. We'll we had to do the side over there because you could look in. So and right see here, the side. it's yeah. going to be very obvious. So that's just caulking the white. Um, we filled it so that you can't then you can't see those little uh, pieces of wood he uses to shim it up with or or to be able to do that and what kind of caulking did you use uh, 
Alex Flex. It stays rubbery. So that way it shouldn't. It's crack proof. It'll stretch a little bit because everything moves in your trailer. Yeah. Everything shakes and moves. So I use this. It's a little more expensive, but it's worth it. Okay, that's it for part three. Uh, we're going to be starting on the floor next. We've already got our window covers on, our uh, lights up, our uh, stove back in. So uh, that'll be it. We'll get back with you later. Thanks.